we're live and welcome to the Brain Dump Safety um, Preload. <clears throat> and this one today is all about, or this evening, depending on where you are, uh, it's all about protection, uh, what it is and what it can protect you from, so that you guys can make an informed talk about what you want to uh, and to what level, and depending on what country, and all that stuff. Um, so, I think why we we'll go first is to introduce um, let's do it in alphabetical order. So we've got Blade Baron. Would you like to say hello? Hi, hey, lads. Some glasses. <laughs> uh, we've also got Kev, the infamous biker. Hi, right, people. And we also have Rick, or better known as uh, Skunk Darkstone. Greetings. And salutations. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to say it. Okay, uh, so I think you've got the idea of the format. I'll just let you know that um, if you're watching this live on YouTube, um, there is, if you go down to the bottom hand on the left hand side of the window, a little yellow uh, pop up will allow you to take you to the actual Hangout <coughs> where you'll find questions and answers. Uh, and if you go to that feature, then you will be able to ask questions live, <laughs> such as why the biker is just done. <laughs> Thanks for the test. <coughs> um, and we can then address those questions as well, because we like to have two-way conversations and stuff. It's not, you know, it's not all about us and stuff. It's, it's for everybody, this. Um, so, uh, evening, chap, says Wyvern Biker. Evening, Wyvern. Evening, Keith. Hey, Wyvern. Wyvern, So, as you can see, it works as well. That's always good. Now, this session will last until uh, 9 o'clock and no later, because at 9 o'clock, there's another session where we can talk about what we like. And we can ask questions about what we like, but this is a topical um, 45 minutes, and in this time, like I say, it's on um, protection and protecting yourself whilst riding a motorbike, okay? And you can then make your own choices about what protection you want to use when you ride yours. Um, <clears throat> so where should we start? Should we start, um, um, let's get one thing straight out of the way, because it'll be a question that I'm sure will pop up straight away. Let's just go through what everybody wears in terms of protection when they ride their bike. Start with you, Blake Baron. Full oh, gear. Yeah. That's lid and leathers and boots. Head to toe, basically, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cheers, buddy. Uh, Kev? Uh, obviously a lid, uh, decent gloves, decent boots, uh, full textile kit. I haven't actually got leathers, but, um, but if I'm not wearing my textile pants, I'll be wearing my Kevlar jeans. Right. So again, pretty much protected from head to toe. Yeah. And uh, stinky. Uh, same too much. I've got leathers myself, um, but generally I wear textiles. But obviously, lid, boots, gloves, um, depending on the weather, depending on the protection and the thickness I wear. So, yeah, full full kit. And generally, a lot of the time, I'm all going to work. High boots. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, high vis probably won't give you much protection from um, objects, but yeah, I, I get the point. Uh, and myself, um, I also wear um, top to toe uh, protection, um, fairly heavy armourish. Um, uh, and the other question then, um, guys, um, are you all the gear? Can I summarise by saying all the gear all the time? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Would you ever yeah. go out about any? You only get one set of, set of skin, I like it attached to me. <laughs> yeah, funny, I just Funny you should say that about your skin. I used to wear textiles, you know, with the body armor and the textiles. Now I've changed to leathers with the body armor and the leathers because I came off my bike with textiles on, even though they held up well. Yeah. I still got a nasty skin rash from the actual body armor itself inside the textiles because I bought the textile jackets. The body armor moved around quite a bit on them. All right. Whereas the leather ones are seem to be quite tight. Do you find? So the thing is, though, isn't it? Is like with anything. I mean, it's a trade-off, isn't it? Um, textiles do keep you warmer in the winter, um, but leather does provide the most protection, um, and they are generally, obviously, more expensive to buy to start off with. Sorry, mate. I'm miles away from the mic. You are, mate. <laughs> No, I said I said textiles generally give you um, a warmer in the winter, but uh, leather does give you more protection. 
I've I've never actually worn leathers. I've always had textiles. Um, I've always had been the opinion that in the I don't know, like I say, I've never worn leathers. But in the summer, if you were to wear leathers, like a lot of people do, are they not like sticky and uncomfortable? Um, uh, wow. Well, uh, sorry, do you want to answer that, Stinky? Yeah. Well, it depends. I mean. Obviously, okay, I mean, I'm not going to say there's a certain product that I've got, and I think most people have got, but I haven't even tried it yet, but um, they're not really that uncomfortable. Um, it depends on what leathers you're wearing. Um, if you're wearing, like, the one-piece race suits, um, I've never had one. I've only had the two-piece ones, but the most of them have got vents in. But a lot of the newer ones have got, the, they've got like, a gel um, moisture-absorbing thing that wicks, wicks it out anyway. Always. I don't wear mine that much because I'm still breaking them in. There's only second I want to bought them. I generally wear more textiles. Well, I've, I've always worn, well, up until I saw some people come off, I used to just wear trainers and jeans and a bell staff jacket, but that's going back way, way, way back when. Plus years, isn't it? <clears throat> and a bit more, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I saw, I saw a few mates come off and that, and they, they ended up in real bad ways. Um, so I, I, I went for levers after I saw all of that, and um, I've always worn them ever since. Now I will say that if you just wear leathers, I find in the summer uh, you tend you tend to sweat, uh, and that sweat makes them stick to you. And then trying to get them off is a nightmare. Um, but um, there has there is a gar there are garments out there that you wear as an undersuit, okay, an all-in-one like a um, a romper suit, whatever you want to call it, you know, the the onesie if you like. But a very thin type of onesie. You put that on first, and it's got um, like a nylon inner and a cotton outer. And what that does is it, it takes the sweat away and puts it into the cotton so that it's not on your skin. Ah, uh, right. And it helps to keep you cool. <laughs> the big plus point is it's absolutely a dream to put your leathers on and off because it doesn't stick to you ever. <laughs> I know, that's I know, you, that's I the know. workaround. I know years ago, before this certain product was invented, or we knew about it, a lot of people used to wear, um, you know, like cotton shirts, thin cotton shirts, and you know the old cotton long johns that the old granddads used to wear? They used to wear that as well, and that used to help. Yeah, the thing is, when you get to the other end, you have to take it off and then wring it out, because it's absolutely soaking wet. <laughs> There's not that pleasant. The, the nylon inner and the cotton outer type garments is what you want to look for if you're wearing full armour in the hot weather. Because it actually does keep you cooler. They're not that expensive either, are they? No, not at all. Uh, less than a pair of gloves. Um, yeah. yeah, less than a pair of gloves. Well, yeah. a, a, well a good, a, a, an average pair of gloves. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I totally recommend them. Uh, Blade Baron, what about your any experience on the old uh, leather and so on? Yeah, I've got one of them one-piece suits that I got off Jim Perry, and I think that's fantastic. Yeah. You know, sort of using that capillary action the way it pulls the sweat away from the body. And I use that on the two-piece and on the one-piece race suit I have. Now, I must admit, on the leathers, you do get different quality of leather, too. I mean, it's, it's all down to your purse at the end of the day, but there's different thicknesses in leather, you know, to purchase. Now, it's whether you've got the money to buy the most expensive leather or not, but the way I look at it is, as long as I'm protected and I'm safe, even if it is the thinnest leather, it's an extra layer of skin to me. Yeah. I, I found because it, because the protective gear is so expensive, but when you think about it, it's worth it in the end if you come off, or, or, or other things that can obviously happen. Um, I've built mine up kind of in a way. Um, you know, you can't. I mean, if you've got lots of money, yeah, you can go to a shop and spend £2,000 and get a fairly decent top-to-toe kit, but I kind of built mine up, um, and that's probably the more um, affordable way of doing it. Um, but, yeah, in terms of leather on, on skin, um, it's not the most comfortable in hot weather, and uh, I do feel for the guys that are in the, the hot countries. Um, but like I say, this nylon cotton undersuit is what you want. If you're in those countries, you might think that will make you warmer, Absolutely not, because what happens is when you're riding along, the wind um, catches on the cold, moist, because it will be moist, the cotton on the outside, and acts as a cooling. It, it's really weird feeling, but it actually keeps you cooler than just wearing your levers alone. So there you go. Um, so there's, it's a, that's the reason. I know a lot of guys in the hot countries, uh, well, not a lot, but some decide not to wear you know full leathers because of that very fact that they get so hot. 
and then there's the other problem that they can't filter in some company uh, countries, and that must be a nightmare. Right? So sat in the flipping eighty plus in full leathers, not moving. That's got to be surely bad for your health. Um, yeah, I I struggle with that last last <laughs> weekend. We had the um, where I like run. I'm not sure if you saw the video or not, but um, and where it was, it took us nearly an hour and a half from the set off line to get you know to get going. So it was just like obviously we couldn't filter because it was like a couple of thousand bikes. Um, and it was so fucking hot. It was so hot. It was horrendous. And it wasn't even a warm day. It, it was only like 12 degrees. But by the time we set off, we would the, the, me and the missus were both drenched in sweat. Yeah. I do. I do. Oh, now I can't guarantee this because obviously I haven't done one as of yet. But I'm pretty sure that if you go for a track day, you have to have leathers. You do, yeah. You do. I've looked Either a one piece or a two piece that will zip together. They will not allow yeah. you to do a track day with textiles. They need, they, need, they need to zip together at least three quarters of the way around. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've, I've been looking into doing one because I think as a new rider, I think a track day would help. Um, but I haven't got leathers, so I'm going to have to wait and get a decent set of leathers. Actually, um... The thing is, is that you can, and I picked up, I'm not thinking of the Nakashis, Nakashis, whatever, they're meant to be quite a good mate, but I picked up a set off of eBay for 60 quid, um, and they were brand, almost brand new when I got them. And long story short, the bloke bought them, he wore them, wore them twice, and then um, probably ate all the pies and put on too much weight. Ah. Yeah, I'm a skinny little runt. <laughs> Um, they fit me. They're actually well. They're they're slow <coughs> fitting, but I can't put jeans on under the trousers. But they you know. Were they the black and white ones, Swan? No, they're just black, mate. They're just straight blacks. I could have, I've seen a set like that on the on the uh, on the eBay, a black and white set of the Takeshi's, and they look okay actually. They're right. There's only one slight problem with the jacket at the moment. The um, padding, the the armour in the shoulder, is a bit manky. So I've got to put the padding back in and adjust it around. It tends to dig my shoulders sometimes, but. The only. The only problem I found with leather is when you buy them brand new, they are the most uncomfortable yeah. clothing to wear. They need a lot of breaking yeah. in. Yeah. I tell you a trick. Um, obviously, with le with leather anyway, um, if you wear it, it actually mould itself to your body, so it's, it actually comes like a second skin. Um, but Nivea, Nivea. If you actually get you go and Major Mrs. Um, makeup cabinet and whatever, get Nivea. And then actually work it in, you know, when you used to, I don't know if you was ever in the army kid actually, to pull, pull the boots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Work it into the leather. And what happens is that actually softens it and it actually feeds it as well. So that actually makes it soften. But you've got, you I mean, you just got to actually wear it. Yeah. No, not only that though, I mean, you look hot in leather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, this, this is something. Just have to get that one in. <laughs> This is something that, um, okay, I went out today. Um, I had to go and see the hospital today. So I thought I'd get a, a birthday right before it happened. Um, but obviously at the moment we've got a lot of all seed, rape and mustard seed around. Uh, just starting to come in the fashion. Or come in the flower. So I actually wore me leathers today. Because, um, I mean, okay, you can get these different colours, but I still think that straight black, unless it's at night, obviously, is a good colour to wear. Because you, the idea is breaking up the, you break up the silhouette. And that's a good colour to wear. So <coughs> straight blacks are quite enough. You know, I mean, they don't look pretty. You can have all these racing colours, but. Shit. <laughs> all right, no worries. Anyway, they've got quite a few questions and highs, so we'll just quickly ride through those, and then um, we'll start talking about the various bits of kit that you can actually get. Um, so we've got Bex88. Hi, Bex. Hi, Hi Bex. Bex. He's a regular watcher. Uh, nice to have you along, and uh, uh, maybe you'll be around for the uh, second session as well at nine o'clock. Cool. So good to see you uh, watching. Uh, also, hi to um, who am I? UK number one. Hi Dave. Hi Dave. I hope your cold's better now, mate. Uh, good to have you along as well. We've also got Andy Smith. Hello, Andy Smith. Hi Andy. Yeah, I think we all love that one, by the way. What one? What you said. Oh, hi Andy. Thanks, mate. Wasn't intended. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Hi, Blade Brown of the video. Yeah, I think we all liked it, didn't we? Yeah, yep. definitely. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, oh, yeah. Track days. Let's uh, quickly pick that one up from Google Mine. Uh, track days also need the right grade of helmet. Mm. 
Yeah, and also don't expect to go there wearing a helmet camera because that won't happen either. Uh, the one, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> the, the, the camera has to be attached to the bike. You cannot wear the hat. You cannot wear a camera. Okay. Um, so yeah, you need all the right gear, and uh, you get racing uh, the racing standard um, on the back of helmets. Anyway, look for that if you want to go on a tactic, along with your four-piece leathers that exit, well, zip almost all the way around your body. Surely, if you was going to go to a track day, you'd go to the track first and then talk to the the people that are the experts what stuff you'd need. Yeah, you, before you, when you book or before you book, you might say, right, what gear do I need, and then check you've got all the right stuff. It's that easy. Uh, also, uh, Count Motherhead. Hello. Hi, Davey. Good to have you on as well, mate. Oh, surf candy. <laughs> Just quickly fire through these. Hi, uh, look, mate. Maybe sex in nine o'clock. I've got your sticker today, mate. I haven't had a chance to say thank you, but I've got your sticker today. Awesome. I need to sort out stickers still. But, uh, and uh, also, we've got Rattus. Manus. Yeah, Rattus Manus. Uh, I have to look at the screen when I see that. <laughs> Just call uh, him Mutley. Mutley. I do. That's how long as well. Right. That's good. Evening, Rattus. No. Excellent. Right. So, I have a question for everyone. Um, and that question is. Um, generally, I believe that most people think that leathers are about protecting you when you fall off your bike. Um, I think that's one of many reasons. What's your thoughts? Starting with Stinky. Okay, well, protecting you when you fall off your bike. Well, obviously, it's um, it's going to stop, we'll say, gravel rash um, to a better degree um, than anything else because it is. A, it's tougher. Well, again, it depends on the leather. Um, there's different sorts of leather, but it will actually stop a lot of leather. That's all the leather actually does. It actually stops your skin being ripped off you. Um, and also, if you do come off, leather can generally, it's generally more hard wearing and can generally last longer than textiles. Yeah, and um, what, what, you know, what would you say would it protect you from if you didn't come off? Well, it can help. I mean, it depends on the leather you're wearing, and it depends on the lining. But it'll heat, it will actually protect you from the cold, protect you from rain, weather, um, bird shit. <laughs> <laughs> bird shit. Who hasn't had a bit of bird shit on the leather at some point in their riding time? I don't know. But um, okay, cheers, Dinky. Uh, Kev, um, if leathers uh, or protective gear in general, um, is it just about protecting yourself from falling off? Well, not from falling off, but when you fall off, or is it for other uses? Um, well, it's. I think it, I think it's there's two main uses to them really, isn't it? Obvious, the obvious one is if you come off, um, and then the other one is from the elements because we're exposed to all the elements, aren't we, on a bike? So I think there's kind of a a dual purpose to them really because they need to do both. Um, they're pretty useless, you know, because if if you start getting really cold on the bike or or really hot, um, you start concentrating more on that than the road. Um, yeah. So I think you need to do both just as well, I think. Um, can I ask one thing? This is going to be me. Um, do, you, do you, when you look for kit, do you look for it for uh, protecting you from the elements and then it obviously has a safety factor, or do you look at it for the safety factor first? I look at it for, I don't know if safety is the right word, I look at it for protection. Protection, sorry, prote yeah, protection factor, sorry. Yeah. That's what. That's my primary. After all the stuff I've witnessed in my life, that's what it's for: protection. Because I mean, I've got a, a pair. Of, they're only tech. Oh, so I've got a pair of textile trousers, and I mean, they leak like a sieve, especially around the crutch area. Now, I actually, um, I wear them only because of the textiles, and they've got armour in the right places. That's what I wear them for. Um, if it rains, I just put a pair of over trousers on. So I don't actually wear them for looking good or keeping me dry. I just wear them because they've got more protection. If needed, I don't wear them for any other reason. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll just getting on to that. I mean, Blade, um, your thoughts on um, your, your protection that you wear? Is it just about falling off that you're protecting yourself from? Is there? <laughs> no, it's not just about the falling off. It's also about the elements too, because I think the leather protects you better for the cold from the cold winds in the winter, you know, than textiles will. It also has a better permeability than. And textiles, in my personal view, you can waterproof, you know, textiles, but you can't necessarily waterproof a leather thoroughly. 
you do get the drying out and the cracking on leather. And as it ages and ages and ages, you're better off replacing the leather rather than trying to uh, rejuvenate its waterproof ability. The difference is with the textiles, or the, I would say the Kevlar, the Kevlar, Kevlar jeans. Kevlar jeans are a lot more hard of wearing than leathers. You know, if you do come off your bike, the leather will sort of eat its way through on a long slide where the Kevlar will hold up better. So it is a mixture of, you know, what do you ride with? Do you ride with leather tops or jackets and Kevlar jeans? Or do you ride with full leathers or full Kevlars? You can yeah. actually get Kevlar jackets now, can't you? I haven't seen them yet, Stinky. Yeah, I think there's, um, I think I saw the, the uh, motor show, not last year, the year before. You can actually get now Kevlar jackets that actually just look like normal, you know the old denim jackets we used to use this, well, some of you used to use as cut-offs years ago. Um, you can actually get them like that, and they actually look like the old stonewashed Kevlar jacket, exactly the same as the jeans, but they've got the armour in all the right places, exactly the same thing. And but they, do they actually button up or zip up to the, to the lowest? They actually zip up. I think they zip. I think they zip, and then they've got the, like the the button loops over the top. Yeah. Because the only thing that worries me about those little bomber jackets is if you do come off and they don't have a zip up or you know at least a tie down, the, yeah. the longer part of your back is just going to get yeah. Yeah. rashed yeah. out. If that bursts open, you might as well have nothing on top. Yeah. I think that's another thing as well. Um, it's all going to buy in the kit. If you don't wear it properly. You may as well not wear it at all because if you haven't zipped it up, um, yeah. you know, if it's not okay, we say you've got a jacket and a tra trouser set that zip together. If you don't zip it together and you come off on your back, then that's going to ride up and you're going to get it all ripped up anyway. So you've got to use it properly. Yeah. The thing is, if you've got a, a, say, a leather jacket or a textile jacket and you do come off, do you throw that jacket if it's not bad or do you replace the body armor inside it? I'd personally throw it if it was yeah. me. Um, I think I I, I I don't know if it's right or not. Like say, because I haven't I haven't been riding that long. But for me personally, I think if I come off, all my gear will be a one-use thing. In that respect, you know, an accident. Yeah. Depending. Now this depends on what you've got. Um, there are companies out there that will repair it. And I, know, I think I was watching the GP a while ago, and there was on saying about the um, the leathers and the designs and stuff. And there's been races that have actually come up three or four times, and they're still the same set of leather, and they're still held up. Mind you, we're talking of like 900 pound a set. So. Yeah, but when when you come off um, racing leathers, what tends to happen is the the outer layer, the the leather that um, sort of like holds in all the armor in place, all the outside of that scuffs away. And what they do is they just like recover it, but the actual internal um, rigidity of it all stays there. And you can actually buy second-hand racing others where they've come off, and there's holes in it everywhere. But you just get it re recovered, and you've got yourself a set of racing others. It's all about the inside, you know, where all the armour is that protects you rather than the outer layer. But um, so yeah, and yeah, you've all picked up on the obvious, the obvious one is falling off uh, and the elements. But I did. Um, a little poll on Facebook, and if anyone's watching from Facebook, thank you very much for all your responses. Um, because I asked, what is it? You know, what things have you been hit by whilst riding? So we're not talking about falling off now. We're talking about things and objects and that sort of stuff that hits you when you're riding along. And I'll tell you what, there has been some fantastic responses of some real, <laughs> some real funny ones. Um, I mean, there's um, we got. Let's have a look down here. Uh, oh, there's all sorts. So, <laughs> um, the vlogger in Australia, um, what's his name? Tasty Ham. Um, yeah. Yeah. He said bra and panties. <laughs> bra what? Bra and panties, uh, which is quite amusing. I get that as well riding the bus, so you know, in the leathers, it, it just happens. <laughs> um, but uh, onto sort of more dangerous objects. Um, We've had things like footballs. Um, we've had um, a forty-ton lorry. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Oh shit! Yeah. A cut from McDonald's. Um, and a crocodile. <laughs> Lots of birds and bees and large moths. Yeah. Um, stones. Fagends. Yeah, fag. Lots of fagends. Um, rocks. Oh, 
I've had, um, I've got hit, I got sprayed by a, from a muck spreader once and got actually had a shitty nappy land in me fucking chest. <laughs> you got a shitty nappy. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I was overtaking a car and I think uh, overtaking a car and obviously it was a forest <coughs> vehicle, so it was left down drive. And I'm overtaking this bloody car. Next thing, there's this, this like, what the? Poof? What? And luckily, it didn't go on my helmet. But like up there. Yeah. And uh, a mother had obviously changed her daughter in the front seat or son, whatever, and then just lobbed the nappy out the fucking window. Like, yeah. And we've had things like um, a, a lorry tire that that blew up and a piece of it. Um, well, it basically totaled the bike. Put it that way. Um, so there's, there's tons of stuff. Rocks, bricks. I've had a brick, and I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, all sorts of things. Um, so there's lots of nasty objects that can come your way whilst you're riding, and protective gear will protect you from that as well. Okay, so uh, I know some people say, oh, yeah, well, I'm not going to come off. Well, you don't have to come off. <laughs> you can still get hit by objects, flying objects on the road. So what I thought we'd do now is go through the different... Um, pieces of armor you can get, and I thought it might as well start you know, do head to toe, start with crash helmets. Um, <clears throat> now, obviously, in crash helmets in the UK, you have to wear one by law, uh, and there, there are various different styles available. You've got your open face, uh, you've got your um, lift up at the front jobbies, um, and then you've got your full full face. Now, just while we're on the subject of objects, I have to show you a reason why I wear a full face helmet and not a modular one, which is what this one was. Um, this is the one that I wore when I, I encountered a brick. So I didn't come off, this was a brick. Uh, so it's a modular helmet. I'm really glad it was down at the time. <laughs> um, now, this you're meant, brick... You're meant, to wear, you're meant to ride with them down anyway, you're not meant to ride with the module at that point. Yeah, but you know, some people smoke and they like to have a cigarette when they're smoking, you know, freedom of choice and all that. But um, I had it down, luckily. And uh, I was on the motorway, and a brick got thrown out. And this is my my best best idea. Is there is a brick stuck between the rear tires of it? You know where the lorries or trucks have got the twin rear tires, and it picked up a brick in between, going down the motorway or the highway, whatever you want to call it, freeway. And the brick flew out, uh, and it was on the other side of the carriageway. So I, I reckon that I had a closing speed brick of about 120 miles an hour, something like that, uh, and it hit me right on the visor, right there. I don't know if you can see that, but um, so anyway, uh, needless to say that, it, that some of the visor um, breached inside the crash helmet and it cut my face, and I couldn't actually see much because there was blood pouring out of my eyebrow. But needless to say, I survived and I'm still here now. Um, just a point, you know, you make your own choices. But if it had been up, I would have a brick where my brain is right now, and I wouldn't be doing this vlog. So that's helmets. Um, and again, it's your choice. Um, I mean, if you're going to be riding slow out, you know, you ride whatever you wear, whatever you feel, see fit. But just think about a flying brick, and then think about what you want to wear on your head. Um, Blade, any comments on helmets? Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> All right, Stinky, we'll start with you. Sorry, mate. I, this is this is the reason why I wear full part of the reason why I wear full gear. About 20 odd years ago, um, I had to. Well, a friend of mine rang me up and asked me to go and pick him up from Paul Key. He had had a couple of drinks, uh, so I took my bike kit, my bike kit, in the in the taxi, went down to Paul Key, and then I was going to ride his bike with him pillion back to upper parts in about three mile, four mile. Um, it had been raining, half past eleven at night. We're going along the main Ashley roads. We're only doing about thirty miles an hour, if that. Um, and a car pulled out of a junction, swerved round him. Unfortunately, we hit a manhole cover. That wheel went down. We both came off. We are both wearing full kit. Um, nothing was wrong with either of us. The only problem was is that my friend actually had an, one of those open face helmets, the half half face helmets, like the old the peak visor on it. Yeah, like yeah. Like yeah. The old yeah, but not with the the, the bit round your mouth. Yeah. And uh, we was doing about 30 between 30 and 40 miles an hour, if that. We weren't going that fast. He came off and he obviously slid and rolled and he ground all his jaw down here with an open face helmet. So that's why I, <coughs> when Pixie actually had her kit, she wanted an open face because she's claustrophobic. And I relented and let her have a modular, but I said if she's, if she's wearing an open face, she's not coming on the back. 
I know it's like stopping her freedom of choice, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm in charge of the vehicle. If she doesn't wear the right kit, she ain't going. End of. Well, yeah, you're responsible for the passenger, aren't you? In that exactly. scenario, but absolutely, mate. Um, Blake, what do you think? Crash helmets. Yeah, I totally agree that you you know you've got to wear a crash helmet no matter what. But I won't. I I'm, to me, I just wear full face and that's it. I won't wear the modulars or open faces. I don't like the idea of, of cruising down a motorway at 70 miles an hour and even a wasp or a fly or a bumblebee smacks you straight in the face or in the eye. I know you wear goggles and stuff, but I mean it can still have a have an impact on you and yeah. cause you to swerve your motorcycle into a dangerous position. Yeah. Um, I came off my bike last year up on the mountain, a, a, a van had gone in front of me and hit the hedge and knocked a lot of snow off onto the road which caused me to just come straight off. He carried on, he didn't even see me anyway because his van was covered in snow. He didn't even bother to clear his, his, his side mirrors or nothing. Uh, my helmet saved my face from a massive you know, skin coming off. I mean, it did graze the hell out of the helmet. And to me, you now it's just a showpiece in the room, just a reminder to me of this is how lucky I really was. It's, it's data and everything on it. The visor came not completely off, but came off one side of the, of the helmet. But the actual helmet is just... Yeah, it's it's not as bad as yours. Um, yours is all split. Yeah. Um, but the whole chin piece and all the left hand side of the visor and all the left hand side of the helmet was just grazed. Uh, if it didn't have that on, I don't think I'd have had a half a face. No. I mean, I would have been picking up skin off the road. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I, I totally agree. I mean, I I have my experience, and um, so yeah, obviously now it's a full. Rather expensive crash helmet, but I was going to protect my head from pretty much anything really that you could think of. What about you, Kev? Um, I, I wear a full face helmet as well, and I, I wouldn't really wear anything else. Um, when when I got the bike and we were getting the gear for the missus to go on the back, um, I was a bit like you, Stinky. My missus was funny with having the helmet on. She was quite claustrophobic and funny about it. But she persevered. She's all right now. You know, she just gets on with it now. But um, I don't know. I just like. I just don't like the thought of. You know, imagine coming off the bike with a full face helmet and got the bed. You, you face it to the curb or something. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't even bear thinking about. No. So I'd rather have something there in front of my face that takes the brunt of it rather than the actual face. You know, I, I'm I'm gorgeous. I want to stay that way. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Kim? I mean, yeah. That sounds silly, but I mean, when I bought. Okay, my stuff wasn't mega money, the first lot of kit I had. I mean, it's not brilliant, but it's not the cheapest around. It was what I could afford at the time. Yeah. When I bought Pixie's gear, mm -hmm. her kit was actually better than mine. Yeah. Is the same applying to you? Um, With your wife? The, the, kit, the kit I've got for my missus is, at the very least, as good as mine. I think we got a discount because it's, I bought it from where I bought the bike from, and we spent a fair bit. So they gave us 20% off the kit, um, but even with the 20%, it was just shy of 1,500 quid to kit it out. So it was, um, you know, so it was a few, it was a few well, close to two grand to kit it out. Um, so yeah, it's as good as mine, if not better. Uh, probably, probably about as good as mine. In fact, I think a jacket, I think a jacket and a pants are the same range as mine, just the women's versions. So, so yeah, very similar, if not better. I was just thinking, because obviously, I mean, you're carrying the most, well, hopefully, the most valuable thing in, you know, in your life behind you, so therefore you want to make sure it's as safe and protected as much as possible, you know? Well, no, I'll, I'll be riding on the most valuable thing in my life to me. <laughs> I was trying to be tactful. <laughs> the second most valuable is behind me. <laughs> oh, the second most valuable well, you behind want. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, I mean, if, 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 it, if it had cheaped out, if it had cheaped out and just got, like, a 50 quid helmet from eBay and a couple of Aldi bits, you know, for and kiss it out for a couple of hundred quid. I would come off and she came off <clears> worse than me. I, I couldn't live with myself, yeah. I couldn't bear it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm conscious of the time guys. Um we've only done a crash on <laughs> so far. But what 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 I can do is we can take these questions uh, as much as I can remember anyway into the nine o'clock one. Okay, I don't mind carrying it over. Um so yeah, I mean Again, there you go. So that's the sort of things that you can encounter whilst riding the bike for your head. And uh, the different types of crash helmet available are the modular, um, the open face, and the, the full face. And 
as as for my experience, there's no way I'd go I'd go anywhere near an, an open face. Um, I might consider wearing a modular for a five mile trip possibly, but not nah, really full face for me. Um, Blaze, that same view, is it? Yeah, spot on. Kev? Yeah, yeah, that's up. And Rick? I've got a modular and a full face, but I generally will wear my full face, especially yeah. for work and stuff. Okay, great. So there you go. Uh, that's what those sorts of hiring can protect you for, and you make your own choice about what you want to wear for you to sell. Uh, now, not before we get to the um, the jacket, I just want to quickly mention that um, I find, and I have been hit by a, a wasp in the neck, um, whilst riding, and it's not a nice experience. Um, so I, I wear a, like a balaclava protector around my neck. Or a muff. You get those muffs, can't you? You get the bike muffs together. Yeah, it's quite a thick material around the neck area so that it can protect you from insects and anything else that you don't really want to smack into your neck. I just wonder if anyone else wears anything like that. That's another option, just to cover your neck. I wear a muff. I wear two. One, on me head and one over my head and actually one around my neck. Right, okay. Blake, do you... I do wear one, but mainly in the winter, though. I don't do it really wear it in the summer because I think I just, you know, sweat and itch too much with them on. Yeah, I must admit, I don't wear it all the time in the summer, you know. But if I'm going to go on a long ride, I tend to because the chances of being hit by a, a wasp again are <laughs> all, all similar. You can get those little thin microfiber ones, actually, um, Alan. They're like really yeah. thin ones, and they, to get some microfibers, they again help, they actually, for some reason, it depends on what you get. But they can actually whip moisture away as well, and it does stop the draft going down your. I mean, no matter how how good your your kit is, you always get, especially when it's raining, it goes down the back of your neck or in the front. So it actually helps stop water going down there as well. Yeah, I, th I think you've got more chance of being, you know, knocked in the neck by something on a sit up and beg bike. I mean, because I don't know about you, Andy, we've been on the you know the booster, but when I'm on the blade, I'm I'm quite low anyway. I mean, it's I, th I think the the chances of being hit by something in the, in the neck area. They're very slim, but on a sit on bag bike, like a chopper or you know a bandit or something like that, you, you more or less face up, yeah. and your neck's quite exposed. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree, and like I say, and sometimes I don't because I am protected by the the shield on the across the front, um, um, and it's just that I got that psychological thing that I remember the time that I did get hit in the neck. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I kind of hit and miss when I wear it, but I, I wear it all the time in the winter because it actually protects me from the cold. <laughs> um, Kev, what about you? Do you wear anything around your neck? Yeah, I wear an x <laughs> Um Kind of like it's a nice start one that comes up over my nose and stuff. Um, more, more for the cold than anything else, though. Um, yeah, I, I don't really wear it in the warm, just when I'm cold. But, but, okay. you see, my, my missus wears a full body quaver, though, more to keep her, her hair out of the face and stuff like that when she puts a helmet on more than anything. She's so vain. Yeah. Can I ask Does anybody a like helmet her? <laughs> Do any of you guys wear ear protectors? No. No. Um, I, I, I actually wore a set for the first time today. I never used to bother with them. And mainly because when I went out with the ride with um, ALV and Crazy Ducati, he was wearing them as I'm saying about it. And I thought, well, I've got a set. They're only cheapy ones. And I'll give it a try. And I tell you what, it's amazing how much difference it makes. It really is. You, I thought, you know, I don't need it. But honestly, it amazes me how much difference it makes. Yeah, I wear it. I wear it plugs on any long ride. Um, if I'm going to go more than about, if I'm going to do more than about a 60 mile trip, I'll, I'll wear earplugs because of the wind noise and the noise of the busser. Um, it's too much. It's too much, uh, and they're just the soft pushing ones that you stick yeah. in your ear that you like to throw them away if you want. Yeah, uh, foam ones, aren't they? Look, you rub yeah. them, you stick them in your ear. Yeah, they 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 mould to your ear so that it blocks out all the noise. Because to be honest, people say, "Oh yeah, but you're not going to hear anything." I, I'll tell you now, right? When I'm riding and I'm doing 70 miles an hour with the noise of the bike and the wind, I can't hear anything anyway. So you must protect your ears. But yeah, to be honest, you just have to see the blue lights when you look in the mirror and see it. <laughs> yeah, I have to use the mirrors for that. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, we've got ooh, three minutes. Well, um, probably going to struggle to get any more done in this one. So I think what we'll do is we'll carry this on over into the slightly more chaotic, fully loaded. Um, but there, I, there, I do want to talk about boots as well because I found that I've, I've been test riding bikes recently, and my boots aren't good for certain bikes, which is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, um, so. We'll cut it off there, I think, so we gracefully end um, and not overrun. 
Um, so I just want to say uh, thanks for everyone tuning in, and we're now going to move to the fully loaded uh, um, live hangout, but we will continue on and get down to our toes before um, chaos ensues. Um, and so I, I would politely request that anyone watching keep questions that aren't related to um, protective gear until we finish getting through that. Yeah. Um, so obviously ask questions about protective gear, but anything else will just get parked basically or deleted in certain cases. Um, so I just want to say thanks for everyone tuning in. Um, and just uh, everyone here, Blade Baron, would you like to say thanks and bye? And yeah, thanks very much, guys, for inviting me, and thanks very much for uh, participating. Excellent. Cheers, buddy. Uh, Kev? Yeah, just thanks, guys. Um, we'll be on the next one anyway. I'm sure we'll talk more about the well, We'll be right back anyway, anyway, but we have to cut things off uh, so that we've got something that people can watch in the right size. Yeah. And uh, Rick? Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, see you again soon. Super. Right, everyone, thanks for tuning in. If I forget your question, please re-ask it at the 9 o'clock one if you want to carry on watching. Um, we're going to end this one now, and the next one will start in approximately two minutes, if I'm prompt. So thanks for tuning in. Um, hope you found this useful. More to come at 9 o'clock, which is in about two minutes on the next live hangout. Thanks for watching. Ride safe. Right invisible. Right invisible. Right invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Right.